Product Scaling At the conclusion of your launch period, you must assess the results of your efforts. Your product launch was preceded by a product testing phase. You learned lessons and applied an enriched understanding of your product, delivery processes and the market in the launch phase. Before moving on to the product scaling phase, you must decide if the product launch was a success. How will you know? At this stage of the game, it's too early to worry about shareholder value. All you need to focus on now is profitability and cash flow. Update your cash flow statement and consider the following. Profitability. Did you make a profit over the launch term? And is the level of profitability of sufficient value? Is it worth your effort? In very simple terms, look at the amount of profit you made over the launch term. Was this of sufficient value to generate an income for you as business owner? And after drawing an income, is there any profits remaining that the business can retain as cash reserves? The first question is important because you need to make a living. But the second question is perhaps more important. If you want to move on to the next phase of the product development, the product scaling phase, because you will need to fund your product scaling somehow. Cash flow. Answer four questions. During the launch, did you need additional capital injections or did you manage to fund business operations from the initial capital invested? Did you maintain a positive cash flow throughout the term? Were you able to meet customer demand throughout the launch term? And if not, was this due to cash flow constraints or were there other reasons? At the conclusion of the launch period, do you have cash reserves equal to or higher than the value of the cash reserves you started out with? You can move on to the product scaling phase when you are convinced that the business can make a profit of sufficient value to pay you an income and to generate a cash surplus. And if you were able to fund business operations successfully from cash flow throughout the launch period. But if you did not generate a profit of sufficient value or if you were not able to maintain a positive cash flow throughout the term, then you must either decide to relaunch your product or scrap the plan altogether. There's no shame in this. Entrepreneurs learn much more from failures than from successes. What is product scaling? Product scaling is essentially perfecting and then replicating a business formula within a cash flow context. Earlier in the product launch phase, you mapped out your processes. Break down the processes into parts and consider how you can create efficiencies. How can you perfect the formula? Every business type will differ in terms of its processes and how you might achieve operational efficiencies. But for the sake of this course, I return to the example of on-site brake pad replacements. You might consider four aspects of your process. Procurement, stock management, fulfillment and revenue collection. Procurement. Review the actual historical data as contained in your cash flow statement over the launch period. What was the total cost of procurement? Stock purchases, consumables and other procurement costs. How can you reduce these costs? Over the last three months, you purchased stock and consumables from suppliers. Let's say you procured 30 sets of brake pads over the period. Now that's not a great quantity, but it's certainly not insignificant. Approach your supplier and see if you can negotiate better prices for the stock 
and whilst you are at it, approach some competitor suppliers also. Another angle to consider is to ask suppliers if they would be willing to give you payment terms. Supplier credit is a great way to fund trade. Suppliers are always seeking to move more stock and may be persuaded to give you 10, 20 or even 30 day payment terms. If you are very confident that your marketing efforts will generate sufficient sales, you may also seek to collaborate with suppliers by committing to procuring a certain quantity of stock over a specified period at a reduced price. This makes it possible for the supplier to procure stock in larger quantities at reduced prices. As your business grows, you may at some point decide to import or procure the stock directly from the manufacturer, but that may be something to consider for later. Stock Management The Japanese are famous for perfecting the just-in-time method for managing stock. Stock is procured just in time for when it is needed. The quantity of inventory is therefore kept at an absolute minimum. Inventory management is a difficult balancing act. You need to have stock on hand to meet customer demand, but you don't want to lock too much of your money in inventory. Consider the last three months. When did you make payments for stock purchases? And how many days did you carry the stock in inventory before using the stock for customers? How much time elapsed from the moment money flowed from your business for stock purchases until money flowed into your business as sales revenue? What was the average duration of the trade cycle? How can you improve on this? Can you do a better job at predicting the quantity of stock you will need to meet customer demand? This is super important as inventory management directly impact your business's cash flow. Fulfillment. Next consider the process of fulfillment. How efficient are you at delivering the product or service to your customers? How long does it take you to respond to customer inquiries? What proportion of customer inquiries result in sales? What percentage of customers accept your initial quotation? Why do some customers reject your quotation? What proportion of scheduled work take place? What are the reasons for the customers cancelling or for scheduled work not taking place? How quickly do you complete the work for the customer? Have you lost customers because of delays? What was the reason for the delays? What customer complaints have you received? How can you improve scheduling? Revenue collection. How do you receive payments from customers? How long does it take for you to collect payment from a customer? What payment methods can you implement? Think of SnapScan or mobile bank card machines. What other forms of electronic payments could you possibly use? If you run a debtors book of large corporate customers, how well are you collecting outstanding invoices from them? What does the performance of your debtors book look like? How many customers fail to pay or pay the accounts late? Replicating. Entrepreneurs underestimate the time and effort required to perfect their processes. It takes time to develop supplier relationships and thereby secure better procurement costs. It takes time to learn lessons about how to schedule work more efficiently and how to manage cash flow better. It takes much time to develop skills with which to better manage the business. Entrepreneurship is an unending quest for improvement. But let's say you do get to a point where you have exhausted every avenue to improve your business processes and now want to start scaling your product. You may embark on a campaign of organic growth. Organic growth is so called as it employs agricultural symbolism. A farmer plants a crop then brings in the harvest. 
consume some of the produce, sell some of the produce, but also retain some of the produce as seed for the next planting season. And as this cycle of planting and harvesting continues, the farm produces more and more. Organic growth in business is growth funded from cash flow, a key prerequisite to move on from the product launch phase to the product scaling phase is effective cash flow management. Cash is the seed of your business operations. Continuing with the example of on-site brake pad replacements, how can you scale this business? At first, you used your own vehicle to do the actual replacements of the brake pads yourself. But you can only do so much. Consider some alternative strategies for scaling your business. Expand business operations. You could create one or more teams to replicate the work you are doing on your own. But this strategy will result in significant increases of overheads. You may have to acquire more vehicles and take on the additional overhead of a salary for each team member. You will have to train new team members and ensure that they perform the work in line with your standards. Such a strategy may indeed result in gaining market share and hopefully increasing profits. But do you have the cash reserves to embark on such a plan? Expand your business through subcontractors. Instead of recruiting your own technicians, you may approach individuals who already have the skills required for replacing brake pads. You can contract with these individuals to do the work and pay them a fixed rate per brake pad replacement. The advantage of using subcontractors is that you don't have to take on additional overheads. But you will also have less control over how the work is done. And with that comes a reputational risk for you. Also, you might find that subcontractors soon become competitors, especially if your business model is easy to copy. Take on a business partner. Why not take on a partner who already have the required skills? You will have to relinquish some of your ownership interest in the business, but will gain from a new partner bringing in capital, equipment and skills to the business. What will be your strategy for scaling your product or business? And how will you manage your cash flow to fund organic growth? Typically, businesses in the early stages of development will employ organic growth strategies. Later, a business may employ inorganic growth strategies, funded by external parties including financiers and investors. To learn more about funding, you may want to watch my series on business finance, which you can find on YouTube visit Constructum Online Learning. To develop your idea into a viable product, to build a sustainable business requires skills. In this course, I try to give you some basic understanding of the principles of product development. But product development is only one of five key areas where you need to develop skills for the entrepreneurial journey. Once you've successfully tested your product idea and are confident that you have a viable product, you may want to watch my series on a winning marketing strategy, which you can find on YouTube. Visit Constructum Online Learning. In this course, I briefly touched on some marketing principles, but you will do well to learn more about how you can develop a coherent marketing strategy before launching your product in the marketplace. Thank you for listening and good luck on your journey.